Okay, can you please tell us your name and your relationship with Adam? My name is Martha Beck and I am the mother of Adam and the author of Expecting Adam. Okay, tell us a little bit about you going through your pregnancy and maybe your strongest and weakest family functions. When I first found out I was pregnant with Adam, I was instantly nervous. My husband John and I were at a time in our lives that we were not exactly ready for another child. Once we found out I was pregnant for the second time, we knew it would be a struggle, but something in our gut told us this was the child we needed to have. As soon as I was far enough in my pregnancy, I had a dream where I was told something is wrong with your child, but it's going to be okay. Instantly, I was nervous, so I wanted to get every test done possible. When my first test came back with high levels showing that my child might have Down syndrome, but the doctors were convinced because of my age, this test was not accurate. So more tests were done and it showed our son had Down syndrome. John and I had emotions that were all over the place and people judged us for our decision to keep our son. Our weakest family function was self-esteem. I was judged for choosing to keep Adam because of the stigma of children with Down syndrome. My self-esteem was low and so was my husband's. Not only were our professors judging us, but our family and friends were too. Looking back, I'm so glad that John and I, um, through our ups and downs, chose to keep our beautiful son, Adam. Luckily for our family, we have a strong spiritual belief that allows allowed us to make it through the pregnancy. While I was pregnant, John and I both had visions that allowed us to push through the judgments that others were giving us. I would not have wanted to live my life any other way and could not picture my life without all three of my children. How would you say these uh, strengths and weaknesses with the family functions impacted yourself personally? Um, having people judge me and my self-esteem being low for the decisions I was making was a huge challenge for not only myself but my entire family. But at the end I was able to become a better person and push through all these judgments that were made about me because of my spiritual beliefs. And overall it just, it was a rough time in my life but it made me a better person in the end. Okay, can you please introduce yourself and uh, your relationship with Adam and the family and maybe one eye-opening experience you had um, after you read the book. Okay, well, hi, my name's Sybil Johnston. Uh, Martha and I go way back, and we once met at a party a while ago where we connected instantly due to both of our children uh, being born around the same time, so we were pregnant around the same time. Um, we chatted about our morning sickness and laughed hard about each other's jokes, and at the time, that's all I really knew about Martha, until one day I thought I'd go out of my way and stop by to bring Martha food similar to what we both ate when we were pregnant since I thought it would be funny and I was in the neighborhood. Um, once I got to Martha's home and she uh, opened the door, that is when I instantly knew something was wrong. She was very weak to the point where she looked like she was going to pass out. After helping her out that day, I rarely saw her since. Now that she created a book on her story of when she was pregnant with Adam called Expecting Adam, it all is making sense now and is an eye opener. Angels were never something I believed in growing up, especially since I was being surrounded in a place where knowledge is the base for everything. I believe that's how Martha felt all along until Adam came about. What blew my mind away was how Martha was able to survive the fire at Food Check if angels don't exist. It amazes me that Martha had a mysterious assistant that helped her and her daughter survive that fire that day. Then once Martha saw the picture in the newspaper and noticed that there was no one else behind her, it really made me question my belief about angels. I strongly do believe something or someone was there watching over her and wanted to save her and her daughter Katie at the time. It's just really eye-opening to see Martha's family's spiritual beliefs. and tell us your relationship with Adam and his family. Then tell us one eye-opening experience you had after reading the book. Yes, I am Adam's teacher currently, and I've been working with him and his family for the past year. And as a special educator, we've been taught, or in recent years, um, we've been taught like personal affairs and little uh, technical jargons and whatnot. And this book was published in the 90s. So, a lot of the terms used in the stigmatism with Down syndrome has changed. Uh, for example, the R word is used repeatedly throughout the book, whereas today that word is not um, appropriate in any setting. And um, certain stigmatisms, like with the doctor, 
encouraging abortion and other family members. That's something that's not typically seen as um, much today, where usually the nature of family members and doctors are more supportive in, in personal professions. And I think it's eye-opening to uh, just look at the difference in education, how much has changed, even just 15, 20 years. Okay, can you please tell us your name, your profession, and maybe one eye-opening thing uh, you had after your residency, Martha Bex. Okay. Hi, my name is Sarah Taylor, and I'm a psychologist <coughs> at Harvard University, and after reading Martha Beck's book, Expecting Adam, I have focused on the turnaround of Martha from the beginning of her life when she first finds out she's pregnant for the second time to the last chapter when she realizes that Adam is a blessing. When Martha Beck first finds out that her child will have Down syndrome, she fears and faces the stereotypes and misinformation that she was told about and what would become of her life with Adam. Martha doesn't know any information on Down syndrome, but she does struggle and finds out some information about her son. In the end, she realized how amazing her son is and how incredible her life has turned out to be. An example of this is when Martha visits her pediatrician, she expects him to look down on her and her son, but he doesn't, and that lets Martha know that everybody doesn't have the same stereotypes and not everybody looks down on them. Martha overcomes many stereotypes and stops herself from being influenced by others, and I believe that this is an eye-opening eye-opening and influenced part of the book because it shows how Martha overcomes the struggles with her spiritual beliefs and how she becomes a better person by accepting her new life. <laughs>